Hey, good morning and uh, welcome to this morning's uh, webinar um, for the next 40 minutes, uh, maybe maybe an hour. Uh, we're we're going to discuss or I'm going to give you some insights in terms of um, financial peak performance in a, in a time of crisis. Um, and it's really going to be a, a, a bit of a, a conversation with regards to some of the areas you, you, you're going to need to focus on in terms of where you are in the business right now, the level of attention you have to your own financial numbers, what it is that, uh, uh, you know, is going to be key to the and critical to the growth of, of your business. Um, as, as per normal, you know, when you, you jump on, let us know where you are, drop into the chat box. We're on a webinar and we're also uh, live streaming on, on Facebook. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, engagement is great. And um, uh, as we go through, uh, if I can answer any of the questions, I, I certainly will. So, uh, look, without further ado, let's dive in. So just uh, a quick show of hands that you can see my screen. Uh, and uh, that's nice and clear for you. Good. I can see that that's that's coming up. That's great. Um, financial peak performance in a time of crisis. And uh, the, 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 the bullet point at the bottom there is, uh, you know, stop flying blind. Now, again, please don't necessarily take that as a, uh, a, a you know, a slap in the face or an insult. But it's really just about raising awareness uh, that, you, you know, we are. We are amidst uh, and deep into into changing times. Um, you know, you've almost got this before coronavirus, uh, and then the focus in terms of after coronavirus, where we are now. Um, and you know, we we are in the midst of of you know some significant change in terms of uh, you know how our businesses have had to function, adapt, pivot uh, in going forward. Uh, the world as we know it before coronavirus no longer exists, uh, and now we have to understand that, and we need to, you know, focus in terms of what it, what is the, you know, the, the change going to look like. And um, I think challenging uh, a lot of businesses in in this context is that, 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 that you know there's an unfortunate focus that you know there are probably quite a lot of businesses out there that aren't aren't going through that change. They aren't adapting. Uh, you know, there is a, a level of resistance. Um, for whatever the reason that may be. And, and you know, today I want to really share some, some insights that will uh, maybe challenge you to get out of your comfort zone. And one of the things that I'll do, you know, for all of you on the, on the call today, um, if you want to pick up on any of these, we'll, we'll reach out afterwards. And I am more than happy to put a bit of time aside to, to maybe dive into some of the detail of what we're going to uh, talk about today. So, Really a key aspect, financial peak performance in a time of crisis. I think the, the bit I, I just want to um, dive into at the moment is um, there is almost this, this notion that, you know, for those of you who are sports people and you, you play sports or you, you get involved in games, um, the reality is you don't, you don't generally, you know, get into a game without actually keeping the score. And yet in business owners, uh, um, you know, and, and potentially their managers today, uh, they, they don't they don't take the time to understand and get a full grasp and a grip in terms of what their numbers are saying. The other analogy that we can look at on this one is, you know, would you drive a car any distance if your dashboard wasn't working? If you weren't being presented with the numbers and the analysis of what your engine's doing, what your car's doing, car's doing, how fast it's traveling, how much fuel you've got left, how far is it till the destination? And the answer is, no, you wouldn't. And, and, and for multiple reasons. I mean, one, for safety and for the health of everybody in the car. In this case, it could be your business. Two, compliance. You know, it would be illegal to be on the road driving like that in the same context in your business. You know, having a, a limited understanding and knowledge of your numbers can have some real significant legal issues, especially with HMRC and tax and, you know, those areas of, of focus running business. And yet for the vast majority of businesses, when I ask about their dashboard and where they're going, the, the, the key number they know is how much money is in their bank. And, and that's kind of like the limit of that that level of knowledge. And I think... You know, we, we need to get beyond that. We need to understand that we have to have a, a real focus and a fix in terms of what our numbers need to look like. And, and you know, actually what they are telling us, we can learn, a, a, you know, an extreme amount from it. And this, 
this session this morning is just going to really open your eyes to a few areas that you, you're going to need to focus. Um, before I dive into that, let's think about the, the business environment. And I want to share, uh, uh, I guess, eight key areas that, that you know, um, will really tap into um, the, the, the ability you know, for, for you and your business to create business success. And in, in the first instance, um, you know, when we look at this, the, the, the idea here that two heads are better than one is that don't be alone as a business owner. You know, even if you're on the call today and you're a, a sole trader, you know, engage your, your accountant, your bookkeeper, you know, have a, a, an, an extra party that you can actually have a conversation with, with regards to what it is that you, you do. Um, secondly, everyone in, in, in your business has a right to be heard, especially if you've got a management level here. Now you, you'll see as we go forward today, there are certain criteria and certain elements that are um, absolutely key and the responsibility of management. Uh, so making sure everyone has the right to be heard, to you know, offer uh, um, and share their thoughts, their opinions, the challenges, the opportunities. Always encourage that the truth is told. You know, don't allow the head to uh, you know to be placed under the surface. That we are uh, essentially going to avoid you know what needs to be discussed or what needs to be said you know putting your head in the sand is no uh, um, you know an antidote for, for, for growing and, and, and driving and protecting the business going forward uh, I think the context of your customer and the customer needs uh, um, is, is in firm uh, focus with you know promoting teamwork and, and, and leadership and leadership for you if you are the business owner on the call today is going to be a, a focus from you that strong leadership going forward and a, a sense that you know in every business that you know what it is that you offer what you say is is kind of like the the, the you know the sense of you know that is your bond that is what the, the minimum expectation from your client base no no surprises you know, um, if there are contentious, difficult, challenging issues to be talked and discussed, then get them out on the table. You know, don't leave them to, uh, you know, to fester in the background. And, and I love the, the, the final piece here, number eight, is be a pro productive and a proactive business citizen. You know, be focusing on where and how to, to you know, to best grow, support and, and develop your business. Now, just in, in, in building on that, for, for you as business owners, there's, there's, you know, I guess a need and almost a responsibility to be a leader. And leadership is often something that we find ourselves thrust into, uh, especially in business. If you, you know, you start a business and you grow and then you've got a team and suddenly you find yourself in a place where you are, you're, you're, you're actually now defined as a leader. So what makes you a great leader? Now, these are all relevant in the financial context because, Finance is the health of your business and being a good leader means that, you know, actually being in that place where you, you, you know, you're not suffering from interference. You know, the, 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 there's an, a really interesting context and I, I've written about this in my book It's you know, it's what I term as interference. And then, you know, one of the biggest fears in, in business is, is the numbers is understanding the value of your you know, your balance sheet, being able to read your balance sheet, understanding what your profit and loss looks like, looking at cash flow forecasts. That creates an incredible amount of interference. It's the bit that holds you back. And hence, being a really good leader is, is absolutely critical in overcoming that fear, recognizing that, you know, as the, as the leader in your business, you, know, you have a responsibility to, to make sure that you're maintaining that, that um, focus. That you understand the numbers, I and mean, if you don't understand the numbers, what lengths do you need to go to actually then understand and uh, and dive into those? So, being a good leader, you know the analogy here, the, the you know the the acronym leader, listen, show empathy, attitude in terms of the positivity that you bring each day, making the tough decisions, energizing the team, and showing resilience. Each one of those, if you combine them in terms of your, you know, your focus each and every day that you turn up just marginally better than you did yesterday, is going to put you in a great place to be able to then dive into what we're going to discuss today. So I think we mentioned that you know, numbers have, have never been more important right now. And, and why is it right now? I think... Yeah, and I don't know about yourselves, and uh, and again, you know, drop a comment in or, or let us know on social media. 
but I, the, the, you know, the, 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 the environment that we find ourselves is, is negatively charged. You've only got to watch the news. You've only got to watch the, the prime minister's question times. You've only got to watch the prime minister's address and the questions that they are posed, the social media feeds. You know, we are, we are in a place at the moment where we are bombarded with a, a, a high level of negativity, where it is really, really challenging. And never has it then been that important for us to then really truly understand the numbers. In fairness to the government, you know, we have been presented with opportunity to support our businesses through, you know, uh, bounce back loans, through furloughing our staff and being able to maintain, uh, uh, you know, their, their wage, wages to a level. All of these issues have meant that our businesses are awash with, uh, with, with, with the opportunity to... Um, invest in our business you know the bounce back loans you know i've i've heard many many occasions where people are talking to me about bounce back loans uh, i've got it there just in case well the idea of a bounce back loan isn't that it's a just in case loan it's actually there so that we can invest in the growth and development of our business the kickstart of bringing in new employees in the businesses you know dwp the department of work and pensions are working tirelessly to uh, you know, get this off the ground so that we can actually put people back into employment. And actually, that means that you could get someone, you know, in your business, leveraging what you do, growing the team and developing the team almost for free for six months to, to you know, leverage and, and increase the capacity of what you do in business. You know, so all of these things are driven by our understanding of our numbers. And it's vital that you and your management team really have a, a, an understanding of what what that needs to look like. And, and today I'm, I'm, I'm going to share with you, um, you know, the, 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 in, the insight that uh, uh, we need to be focusing on. And it won't, probably won't be what you're expecting. It won't be, um, you know, a, a, a massive surprise, but it will be different from what you're probably thinking right now. And I think the last point on here is there is an inordinate, an inordinate amount of support and help that, that is out there and available as a result of this crisis. And indeed, you know, in our own coaching practice and, and throughout my colleagues throughout the UK in Action Coach, you know, um, I, you know, you talk to our coaches, we have never been so busy in terms of helping and supporting businesses out there to, you know, navigate, uh, understand, to plan and, and get focused in terms of the future of where they're going and the opportunities that they, they, you know, they face now as a result. So the point and the last point on this one is don't waste this crisis. Don't allow this crisis to create overwhelming negativity, interference. Don't, don't watch from the sidelines. Don't whinge about it. And, and I know there's, you know there's probably a heck of a lot that we can whinge about, but actually be in this winner's mindset. Embrace this crisis and move your business forward. That's my challenge to you. And hopefully today with what I'm going to share, we'll give you a bit of an insight on that. Now, there is a point here um, and, you know, excuse the, uh, the, the you know the the, the the flippancy of saying that it isn't your fault and when in one breath I'll turn around and say that you know if you're the business owner everything that goes on in your business is your fault but the point here is business owners what we what we tend to do is we understand sales and profits and generally speaking our focus is on tomorrow and what we want to do that's that's what we do. We you know we are focusing on 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 actually the the, the growth and development of the business. We're, we're focusing on profits, and, and and you know don't get me wrong, it's not a bad place to focus. But sometimes it can be a challenge to focus there. We have accountants, uh, and you'll probably all have accountants yourself. And, and and generally speaking, they you know they're using the reporting language, and and that language is sometimes very complex. Uh, and difficult to understand and you know to to come to grips with and their focus is often on the basis of the information that we have been presented with yesterday now the interesting point here is we we've uh, we've got the the banks who are getting paid for the transactions that we make and 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 actually encourage good debt and their focus is always on today now, when you think about this, we've got three different elements of that, that are intrinsic to your business, but all of them talking a different language. You talk the language of sales and profit. Your accountants will talk the language of prioritization and reporting and understanding and divining and analyzing your balance sheet. And your bank talks this language in terms of, okay, so you know, how are we getting paid? Are they a good payer? And the point here, the one thing to remember on the bank 
because sometimes you'll go and talk to a bank manager or your link in the bank and you will talk about sales and profit and they're going to be talking about how you're going to pay for it they're going to be talking about you know where can we see the money coming in and what we tend to forget as business owners is that actually one of the most critical points in there is they can see everything that's going on in your business and they've probably analyzed and got a better view and analytical approach to your business than you do so we need to start shifting and addressing the language that we talk and what i want to talk about today is the the real focus on cash and the fact that 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 you know uh revenue is 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 vanity profit is sanity and cash is king or queen in your business cash is the bit that makes the difference without cash your business you know, it doesn't matter what sales and how much profit you're making will we'll cease to exist. And we need to think about that for a moment. Your business will cease to exist. It won't grow and have the capacity to grow unless we have cash in the business. Now, if you think about that and, you know, if listening to this now, you're a business that at some point has struggled to, to make, you know, the wage bill or even to make your own payments or to pay, you know, your invoices. You know exactly what I'm talking about when we talk about cash. So through this short insight in session today, I want to uh, um, you know, highlight three key areas of cash flow that we need now, now need to understand and, and have the measurements in place. Part of our dashboard that I talked about within your business, I want to focus on net cash flow. I want to focus on the operating cash flow and I want you to think about the marginal cash flow. And then we'll, we'll have a, a bit of a jump into each one of these in turn as we go. And then when you take away from this, it's kind of, you know, what are the, the action points that you need to know? What is it that you need to dive into and understand in order to make sure that your business has this healthy focus with regards to the, you know, the cash in your business? So the first instance that we're talking about here is uh, your, 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 your cash flow in terms of the net cash flow. And the, the net cash flow is essentially the, the change in you know, borrowings and what it is that you have in the bank. And um, I think you know, the, very, the very simplest way to, to start looking at this in terms of net cash flow is if you imagine at the beginning of the year, your net cash flow, you know, you have, you start the beginning of the year with 10,000 pounds in the bank. By the end of the year, you've got 15,000 pounds in the bank in cash. You've had a positive net, net cash flow of, 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 of 5,000 pounds. You know, you, your business has grown in terms of that. Now what's happened in between will be you know, spike peaks and troughs, but your cash flow has grown over. And that is a good thing. What does that look like on a weekly basis? What does it look like on a monthly basis? You know, if you want a, a real simple focus on this one is start getting really analytical in terms of, you know, how are you consuming cash and how are you generating cash? And you can look at that on a daily basis. Top tip on this one. You know, if you think that every single day you are generating, uh, um, you know, uh, revenue into the business and then you're spending it, every time something goes out of the business, Go into the detail of what, what, what are we spending on? What is that money going out? Does it need to go out? And if you did it on a day-by-day -day basis, on a transaction-by-transaction, -transaction, and if your business is big enough that you have an accounts department, you have someone who's dedicated simply to doing that, you, you will, by virtue, increase your, your, your net cash flow, the, the, the performance and health of your business over that, 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 that period of time. So when we look at this in terms of the, the you know the balance sheet side of life, so out, outside of the uh, of the operations is is you know the the, the other capital which we have uh, um, within the business. Now, generally speaking, this is the responsibility of your management teams. You know, and if we think about this, you know, the funding that we bring into the business. So think about your bounce back loans. Think about the you know the finance that's been made available. Think about your, your the cash flow that you have at the moment, or overdrafts, or bank loans that you've got, or that you need. You know, funding equals operation, and essentially, you know, funding uh, is debt plus your equity in the business that we're able to then invest in operations. 
Now, this is where a lot of people get it kind of quite confused is they get worried about having this debt. And, you know, if you've got a bounce back loan, or if you haven't at the moment, you maybe need to look at that, you know, or C bill. You know, one, one of the things is, is if you have that money, how are you putting it to work to develop and grow your business? How are you utilizing that to generate new business? You know, um, when we look at this in terms of the operation side of life, you know, the, the, the management key responsibilities here, um, when we talk about accounts receivable, accounts receivable is quite simply the invoices that you put out and how quickly you get paid or your work in progress. You know, um, you, 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 your inventory in that work in progress, so, you know, how much is that worth in the business right now? And what about accounts, you know, uh, um, payable? You know, how long, the, excuse the, the mistake on the slide there, obviously, the bottom one is accounts payable. How long does it take you to pay a supplier? So if we are shrinking our accounts receivable, in other words, we're getting paid quicker and we're extending our accounts payable. In other words, we, we add a few days on to being paid, you know, paying our, uh, uh, you know, invoices. And then we focus with regards to, you know, maximizing the opportunity from the inventory or the work in progress that we've got within the business we're going to improve our ability to have that operation and that operational cash flow which we'll dive into and have a conversation on and the point here is that it, it creates a positive cash movement in the business your profits go up which is the, the language that you understand as a business owner so you know we can increase price you can look at volumes. We can increase our margins. Micromanaging the, the overheads, which I just talked about in terms of actually getting into the, the, the weeds with regards to what it is you do and what's going out on a day-by-day -day basis. That increases our profits. And then actually, if we're able to you know, start to reduce uh, the, the working capital, so we're you know, bringing that, that working capital down, you know, actually accounts receivable, collecting faster, inventory management, invoicing more frequently, um, certainly if you're an, you know, a service based company and paying your suppliers, you know, and getting better uh, credit deals with your suppliers. You know, the, the point here, we create positive cash movement. I often hear to you know business owners it will pride themselves and, and I understand it rightly so on on paying their invoices. I, I you know I, I never sit on invoices. Well, actually, if you negotiate with your creditors, if you negotiate with your suppliers, and you're able to extend that, um, you know another one. Uh, it might be that you know the, the, a business that is uh, you know pays their, their their staff on a on a monthly basis, uh, or actually on a, on a, a weekly basis. Uh, yet they they get paid on a monthly basis. They will always struggle with cash flow because they've got money going out every week, but money not coming in until every month. And then actually, you go out to your clients and you suddenly ask your clients, well, "Look, we want to we'll shift into uh, weekly invoicing. We'll shift into weekly billing." And then suddenly, you start to bring that into the business every week in line with the money that you're paying out on the wages every week, and you will soon find you you become cash positive. It's these, and it sounds really simple, but when you start to take a really deep look at what your numbers are doing and what you're doing within the business, that's where the value is offered. So let's talk about the cash flow chapters. Now, um, there's a guy called Alan Miltz and a great book out there. Write this down, get a pen and write this down. Uh, it's called Scaling Up. And in the financial chapter, Alan talks about, um, you know, the, the, the four chapters of cash flow. And that's what I want to talk about today. And it's essentially that for you and your business, you understand each of the chapters and the, 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 you know, your responsibility, the management responsibility and the impact that it has on the business. And it's kind of if you don't if you don't understand any one of these chapters, if you imagine that finances is a a story that your business tells. And, you know, we just focus on profitability at the end. Uh, you know, you know in, in terms of just, just one chapter, but we don't then, you know, look at the others and we just dive to the end of the book. We don't know, we don't know the mechanics of how we got there. We don't know the mechanics of how to get there. So these four chapters, and what I would refer to as the cash flow chapters, are going to be quite critical. So the four chapters, the cash flow chapters, it's it's really uh, uh, you know, when we look at 
chapter one in terms of profitability, working capital in chapter two, chapter three is about other cap capital, and then chapter four is all about funding. And you need to understand all of these financial chapters to really understand and know your numbers in your business. And, and my, my advice to you after today is, uh, you know, again, if you, you, you know, you've almost certainly got your own accountants is um, take your notes and go and sit down and have your accountant explain these to you if you don't know them. Um, a lot of business owners, you know, they get that one once a year conversation with an accountant where uh, they, they are ex explained their their end of year accounts and they, they go through the balance sheet and then the profit and loss and they, they explain the reports and uh, maybe even look at the you know the the the, uh, the, 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 the cash margins and you know, everything else that goes to make up your end of year and many many business owners have got no clue what their accountant is talking about now the interesting point is that is only the pinnacle of the pyramid for what an accountant will do if you sit down with an accountant and ask them to go through this to unlock opportunity, you know, your accountants will dive at the opportunity. Uh, and I, I'd, I'd be very, very surprised any accountant that then wouldn't want to have that conversation. Uh, and actually the base and the wider function within an accountant firm is, is really about helping you to understand the numbers. It's, it's really that this is the point where we see that the difference in this language between what you talk as a business in talking profit and what your bank will talk about in talking debt, service and capacity. And just always remind yourself that as everything we're going to go through now, that your bank has an absolute clear you know, view and line and insight to what it is that's happening in your business right now, more so than you probably realize and imagine. So actually, going forward, there's probably some significant value for you to start thinking like a bank and being obsessed with increasing the cash in your business. So profitability. In this instance, we're, you know, we're looking at, you know, profitability is about, uh, you know, how um, your balance sheet is, is being presented um, uh, and, and, you know, the management of profitability, you know, being, you know, critically important. Working capital uh, is about the, you know, the capital um, that your business was able to and is able to, to, to uh, create within the business. Um, other capital, uh, yeah, the, these are, um, you know, other areas of your business that you, you probably got um, capital that you can release um uh you know it might be that you've got to look to see if there's been movement in these ones but these are in in some instances they're less they're less important because it might be that you know you hold buildings as assets and so on and so forth and then the bottom line is that you know finally it equals you know the funding so profitability plus working capital and the other capital that you have in the business equals the funding and the cash that you have in the business now, here's the question, not did you make enough profit, but last year, last month, last week, did you make enough cash? And think about that for a moment. So do you have, um, you know, a, a plan of action? Uh, you know, can you start to think now about what is your plan to increase the cash flow through your business, through sales and marketing operations and finances? You know, if you're sitting on, um, you know, a bounce back loan, C bill loan, if you've got availability for, for cash at the moment, you know, what is the plan to actually start to focus on that? Now, it's really interesting. You know, we run for our clients every quarter, um, you know, so our next one will be in January. We run a day where we focus on quarterly planning. And, and, and one of the main, main focuses of that plan is what is our cash plan? What are we going to be focusing on in order to actually develop the, the cash opportunity for the business in order to increase our cash flow? So what about the three cash flow measures then? So we're going back to this one. So we, we you know, the net cash flow uh, is really that focus with regards to what it is we started at the end of the year and where we are at the end of the year. And this is the, the business owners, you, the CEO, uh, this is this is your responsibility, 
you're going to be looking that's going to be where you're going to drive the ability to think that's what we've got cash wise and this is now uh, what we need to be focusing on next quarter next year next five years to make sure that, that actually our net cash flow throughout this period is significantly improved so the next level and this is the responsibility of your management team. And again, if you're a sole trader, this is where you can look to support from your bookkeeper and your accountant is where we then start looking at operation, operational cash flow. And this is about chapter one profit and chapter two working capital. So operational cash flow is the ability to be able to actually fund what it is that you're doing in the business. So it's critical uh, measurement for your management team. You know, your, your management team have got to be really on point here in terms of making sure that they are really clear on the impact that they have on operational cash flow. You know, uh, it's, it's really quite interesting you know, that the responsibility for chapter, you know, chapter one profit on this one and, 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 and working on chapter two. The management team have to know what, what the, the, the fundamentals are for this one. And, and don't forget, this is this stage isn't necessarily just to focus on on profit. Profit plays an you know significant part here, but this is understanding how the business generates cash. Now, the interesting point on this one, uh, it's it's again, many businesses are, are really struggle with this. Is that cash gap business? Is how do we bridge that gap? Now, the 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 construction industry are a fine example of this, but. You know, for many businesses, you know, there, there is a point that you buy, uh, you know, to 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 actually, you know, invest in your business. So you're spending on stock, you're spending on your team on wages. But then there is a significant gap between you actually spending and that money coming in. Now, if you look at the construction industry, they'll do anything up to 90 days where they've got to actually, you know, manage that cash gap. And that's not good for any business. This goes back to that accounts receivable. You know, we've got to we've got to bring that back. We've got to roll it in. It's, the analogy on this one is: imagine going to Tesco's and doing your weekly shop, and at the cashier saying, "Look, brilliant! Um, just send us the uh, the invoice for my shop, and I, I'm going to pay 30 days end of month. So effectively, I'm going to wait to the end of the month, and I'm going to pay at the end of the next month. So I'm going to pay in 60 days. You know, none of the big supermarkets would ever entertain that, and yet in business, it is now kind of like the norm." but it doesn't necessarily need to be the norm in your business. So we've got to improve the quality of cash flow in your business. Now, here's the thing and the point to raise on this one, when we look at operation and operating cash flow, right now, your business is either in growth or decline and is absolutely in need of management. Now, the point on this one is if we look at this through the management side of life, your management on operational cash flow are looking for wastage and gains. And if they're not, that's what they should be. Everything that they're doing should be looking at some point, increasing efficiencies, increasing productivity, you know, reducing waste and really looking at making, making the gains. Again, if you go and start looking at this on a daily basis, if you measure it, you know, regularly, uh, you know, I often say to people, how often do you actually look at, you know, maybe your profit and loss sheet? And it, it's maybe if we're lucky once a quarter, but you can actually set up and focus. You know, one of the things that I'll always do with any client is set up a cash flow forecast. And we can put assumptions in there in terms of, you know, what is the growth? What are we looking to, to, to uh, you know, avoiding the, you know, declining in the business? But where are we looking to grow? What are we targeting in terms of our sales? And actually, what are we spending? So what are we expecting coming in versus what's going out? And then for management, that becomes their responsibility. Looking at the wastage, looking at the gains and where we can all, you know, build on those. So you can start to see straight away that there is a lot of opportunity here with regards to how we can really move this forward. And hopefully that, that message is coming across loud and clear here. So the cash flow quality, the operating cash flow is, is absolutely key. And it's a management responsibility here. Now, when we look at the third measure in cash flow, the third measure in cash flow is when we look at the marginal cash flow in the business. And again, you know, the management team have got a responsibility here. Uh, and now marginal cash flow is really about creating, uh, um, you know, for every pound that you spend, 
uh, in, in actually delivering your, 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 your service, what is the gross margin there? You know, how much, how much margin do you make uh, on the basis of how much it's costing you per sale? Uh, and again, this will be an area that a lot of businesses uh, won't necessarily have a real handle on. You know, the, the, how, how do we create that marginal cash flow that gives us the additional cash that we can, you know, we can generate, um, you, you know, if we sell just that little bit more in terms of our product or our service? Most companies only look at their, uh, their gross margin uh, and not necessarily, um, you know, the, the gross marginal cash flow. Um, because I think, you know, if you looked, you know, whether it's a pound or a hundred pound in what you're spending in your business, if it's costing you, you know, on the gross margin, you know, for every hundred pounds, it costs you 50 pounds. And then once you take take away all your say, you know, all your costs at that, when the net margin is 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 you know five pound, it means that we've got some work to do in improving our marginal cash flow. We absolutely have. So you you, you can't you can't really start to focus on this unless we understand the chapters, understand, you know, uh, uh, you know what it is that we want to achieve. Now, um, I'm hoping that you you you're staying in tune with me on this so far. Uh, you know, just put, put a, the hand up and give me a, a show or drop a comment into the comment box if, you know, this is, this is resonating with you in some way or shape and making, making sense. Brilliant. That's great to see. You know, the point here um, is it's not all bad news. What I want to do now is actually share with you um, uh, and, and really towards the end of our presentation now and, and this webinar, uh, I want to share with you really about what we would term as the power of one. Now, um, in this quarter right now, or you, you can change that in looking at quarter one next year, uh, there are seven levers that we can start to really have a significant impact on. Seven levers. Uh, the first one is your, your, your price increase. So what, what, what is the, you know, could you put a 1% price increase across what it is you do? 1%. Now, if you did that, it's going to have an impact. You know, but on its own, it might not be a big impact. And, and, and to be fair, you know, that could be a 1% increase or you could look at a 10% increase. The one, the one thing I always am aware of when we look at price increases and how we can have an impact on that is, generally speaking, the vast majority of your client base won't, won't realise that there has been a price increase. Unless it's what I would term as being an, an end of aisle an end of aisle item or something of that nature, um, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're generally going to be pretty protected in that respect. But if you start to think about, you know, putting a, a percentage increase in terms of our price on a, a main aisle item, and so don't forget an end of aisle item is going to be something that people recognize. If you put the price of milk up, everyone knows. But you go and put the price of fudge, you know, fudge, fudge uh, um, rolls up on an, on an aisle item, nobody notices. So what, what can you do price increase? Now volumes, volumes is then really about uh, how can we increase the volume of what it is we do? So if I'm now going to gain a little bit more money in terms of what I'm doing price increase, what can I then do on volume? Well, volume uh, means that we're, we can increase our lead generation. If we increase our lead generation, we increase our conversion rate. So could I add a small percentage in terms of volume? Can I bring more leads into the business? And as a result of bringing more leads into the business, can I convert at a higher rate? So now you've got price and volume, which have now combined you can start to see actually that's going to add quite a lot more in terms of our net cash flow. It's going to impact on our operations cash flow. And, and actually, if I'm now focusing on our marginal cash flow, we're going to be more efficient at what we do and how we do it. Now add to this in terms of our cost of goods and our direct costs, can we reduce them by a percentage? Can we take a percentage off that one? So if we look at how much it's costing us, to actually now provide the service can we be more efficient more productive equally on that one you know can we can we renew our overheads can we go and have a look at where our overhead costs what type of overheads are we uh, needing to go back and actually maybe review and, and 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 have a you know a look at to improve and then as i've mentioned earlier on okay so can we uh, you know reduce our our accounts receivable days so can we actually, you know, re reduce the amount of time we wait? If we're on 30 days for an invoice now, can you make it seven? 
uh, actually, can you make it, you know, you're going to pay right now. In some instances, and there's a great story with, uh, you know, the, the, the team at Dell when they started out, you know, they were really, you know, doing millions, but they, they just weren't making the money. They didn't have the cash flow in the business. And they were running the risk, at, you know, of going broke. And, and here's an interesting phrase for you. You know, um, you, you, you can you can you, you can actually grow broke. You can be a profitable profitable business, but if you don't have the profit cash flow focus in the business, then you know you know you was as healthy as you can be, you can still grow broke. And what Dell did is they actually suddenly got to a point where you know they started um, you know obviously how you then order your computer, your PC, and if you notice that when you order a, a Dell PC, you know you'll put the specs in of what it is you want to to order, and you'll pay in before they've even got the component parts to build it. So suddenly you, they've gone from a, you know, a, an accounts receive, receivable of maybe 90 days to a negative, and they actually went to a negative 21 days. So they were being paid 21 days before they provided, they provided the service, they provided the product. Uh, that, that might sound nuts, but actually, you know, it's not easy for many businesses to get into a negative uh, um, accounts receivable days in other words that you're getting paid days before you provide the service but you can certainly look at being paid now you can certainly look at being paid in two days in three days in seven days and it's worth having a a, a real view on what that might look like then what about your inventory and work in progress what is that looking like can you you know create clear uh, focus in terms of you know maybe you you your your uh, your work in progress. It's if it's taken you three days to do something, it now takes you two or two and a half days. If uh, you've got inventory, you know how much stock are you sitting on? Uh, what what is the stock of the ability to actually start to control that stock? What's not moving? What could move? Um, you know when you start to look at inventory, you know what are your 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 high volume sales? Yeah, when, you, when we start to really take an interest in this one, can you do something that will cost and improve it by 1%? And the answer is absolutely a resounding yes. The final point on this one is accounts payable days. So, you know, can you add a day, two days a week to, to when you pay your invoices? You know, if you're a business right now that, you know, you're getting the invoices coming in, and their terms is 30 days, but you're paying the moment the invoice comes in. Actually, start to pay it on 30 days. Remember, all of this is all focused on, on absolutely increasing, you know, cash in your business. Now, I don't want to leave you without actually giving you the, an exercise to do. And there's a very simple table here. And my challenge to you all is to, you know, on one side of the table is write down the, the, the seven key elements to, you know, what we would term as that power of one. And then with you and your team, maybe even sitting down with your accountant. And, and incidentally, you know, I am, I'm dedicated to putting a bit of time aside. So when we, when we get in touch with you, I'm happy to put time aside and actually talk you through this one and, and, and brainstorm with you in a coaching session. You know, what are the ideas that you can come up for price, volume, cogs, overhead, accounts receivable, inventory and in work in progress, or indeed your accounts payable. Now, when you look at all of those areas, and you start to think about, right, the implementation of those ideas. Can you see how this has a positive impact on your business going forward? Can you see how, you know, this is going to have a, a significant impact over if you were to you know, focus on this on a, on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, but maybe even a daily basis over the next 12 months, what impact would that have on your business? You know, put your hand up at the moment if that is going to be a positive impact. And I'd be very surprised if I don't see a flourish of hands going up in, in, in just that, map, that, that fact. Brilliant. Well, look, um, I said today it was about you know, financial mastery in a time of crisis. And the point of this is really recognizing the impact that you need to have and the richness of cash adds to your business. So, you know, having that focus on net cash flow. So looking at what do I start, you know, at the beginning, we're about to go into December. So have a look at your bank account in, you know, at the beginning of December, what is our cash position? And then each week, look and study as our cash position increased. If it's not, what can I do? Is my operational cash sustainable in terms of actually being able to develop and grow and deliver what it is we do? And is our marginal cash flow 
in tune with actually, you know, we can see really clearly on how much it's costing us for every pound of business we're doing. And actually we can actually increase our marginal cash flow by, by reducing, you know, areas of, of wastage. Uh, I truly hope that this has been an insightful um, session for you today. Uh, I will uh, absolutely, um, you know, reach out and happy to have, um, you know, a conversation with anybody at all. Um, I put a, a coaching session aside, uh, you know, an, an hour, hour and a half for anybody who's interested in, in, in having a, a session. And if you want to dive into this in a little bit more detail, then you'd be more than welcome. And uh, I'll assure you that uh, you, you'll gain a significant amount of value from it. So that's it. Uh, my name is Steve Gaskell, um, a challenge coach. I've got a, a book out there which, uh, you know, actually focuses on business shouldn't, shouldn't be this tough. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be uh, dropping you a, a line. And if you want to book in that, that coaching session, you will be more than, more than uh, um, welcome. And in the meantime, it's Friday. Uh, have a fantastic weekend. I hope I've given you a little bit of food for thought today uh, and uh, look forward to, to catching up with you in the, the very near future. Thanks a lot.